Hello everyone. Today I'd like to do a study with you and I'm not going to read a lot of scriptures. I'm going to try to put the word of God together for you to reveal to you what has been revealed to me by the Holy Spirit of God. We see in the book of Luke chapter 21 verses 20 all the way to 24 we see that Jerusalem will be taken. Israel will be led away by the sword and they will go into all nations and be held captive. And Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. This is what John is seeing in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. He is seeing the holy city has been given into the hands of the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot. Well, what the devil is trying to do is trying to deceive the world that this is his wrath. Because we see in Revelation, chapter 14, verses 19 and 20, that the wrath of God, when God, when Jesus returns, he will also tread the city and uh, he will tread the wine press. And that's what the enemy is also doing also because remember, he is a deceiver. We know in Revelations 12 and 12, we see the signs of the return of Christ. Uh, we see that they are saying to those on the earth, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil has come down unto you having great wrath. We see the woes. We see in the book of uh, Luke 21 and 23, one of the woes is to those that have child in those days. Because in the great tribulation, you do not want to have any children. Because it will be a dangerous time. We see in verse 13 and 17, we see that those woes, the reason why the angels are warning those on the earth is because the devil is coming down into them having great wrath. And uh, he is angry in Revelations uh, chapter 12 in verse 13 and 17 he is angry at the woman that brought forth the man child which is Israel Jerusalem Jesus was born in Jerusalem he was born in Israel and the devil is taking his anger out on this city that brought forth this man child because if this man child had not have been brought forth the devil would not be facing his judge we see in the book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse 12 we see the signs of the sun and the moon and the stars we see this is a sign to the world that the great tribulation is over. And this is the return of the Son of Man, Jesus. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 and 30. We also see in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, this is also uh, the wrath of God. So you are seeing how the enemy is going to deceive the world through the signs. Remember I told all of you, how many times do these signs take place? We know these signs will continue to take place until the end. We do not know at which time that sign takes place that the sun is darkened and the moon turns into blood and the stars have darkened that Jesus will be revealed. Now we also know at one of those signs this devil is going to be revealed too. You're seeing in Revelations 8 and 12 that he's going to also use those signs to establish his coming. We also see in the book of Revelation chapter, I mean, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29 and 30, it is also the return of Jesus. We also in Revelation 6, 12 and 17. So we see that the beast is also coming using those signs and wonders. He is also coming with the wrath of the devil. We see that, in, that Jesus is also using those signs for his coming. We know that at one of these signs, Jesus will be revealed. We know at one of these signs, the beast shall be revealed. In the book of Luke 17 and 30, the Son of Man shall be revealed. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, the man of sin, the Son of Hell, shall be revealed. So we see that both of these will use those signs in the heavens. The sign of the sun being darkened, the sign of the moon turning into blood, and the sign of the stars being darkened and falling to the earth. We see in the book of Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6 the two witnesses, the two candlesticks. Revelation 1 and 20, they are two churches. In the book of Revelation chapter 11 and 7, we see they're going to prophesy for three and a half years. These two witnesses are going to prophesy at the time that the beast is on the earth. But do you notice something, church? He is not able to kill them until their three and a half years has been finished. We see that he will make war with them and kill them in Revelations 11 and 7. We see in Revelations 13 and 7 that this beast will make war with the saints and overcome them. We see in Revelations chapter 7 and 1, 
We see the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Church, this is the end that John is seeing. In Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 2 says the four corners is the end. John is seeing the end of all things. He's establishing the word of God with us that when he sees this, he is seeing this at the end of the last three and a half years. Woo! Glory to God. That's revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God. Woo! That's the good stuff. Church! We see in the book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4, the 144,000 are sealed. Because Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30, church tells us those that are sealed are sealed until the day of redemption. Woo! Glory to God! They're being redeemed. We see the angel with the seal is preparing the 144,000 to meet their Lord Jesus Christ. Because in Luke chapter 21 and verse 27 and 23, the return of Jesus. Look up, your redemption draweth near. Revelations chapter 14 and verse 1. The 144,000 are standing with Jesus. Revelations 14 and 3. Woo, glory, hallelujah. They were redeemed from the earth. Oh, church, it don't get no better than that. I tell you what, that's good stuff right there. If that don't make you holler, nothing will. Woo, that's good too. It's good. Now, we're also going to see those 144,000 in the book of Revelations 21. We're going to see them as whenever John is measuring the wall. Now, before I get to them, church, let me take you back to the 144,000 are killed for the word of God. We see in Revelation 7 and 1, the four winds are being held back while the 144,000 are being sealed. Because Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9 and 10. Now, church, if this video goes too long, I will go to part two because this is too good to be in a hurry. Amen. We see in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9 and 10. We know Jesus is the Son of Man. We know he is prophesying unto the wind. Oh, glory, go on, Jesus, and prophesize unto the Spirit of God. Ooh, oh, glory, oh, glory, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Spirit of God. I can't help it, church. I got to shout. Because when I preach this gospel, the Holy Spirit will move on me and I'll feel his presence. Oh, I can't take it. I can't take that anointing because it is just too powerful because this word is good. It is the good stuff, church. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Ezekiel sees Jesus prophesying to the Spirit of God. Oh, glory, glory. And he's talking to the four winds. He's prophesying to the breath of God. To the Spirit of God. He says, breathe upon these slain that they may live. Woo, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we love you. We love you, Lord. The power of God is just amazing. It is just overwhelming, church. We see in Revelation chapter 14 and 4, the 144,000 of the first fruit unto God. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 3. We see in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 17, the 144,000 are the measure of the wall, the measure of a man, the measure of an angel. Because Luke chapter 20 and verse 36 is going to establish that word with us. Woo! That those are those in the resurrection. Those that were raised from the dead. They are establishing that word with us, church. That those 144,000 were martyred. They were slain for the word of God. That the two witnesses that are slain for the word of God. Glory to God. Glory to his holy name. Oh, church, I'm going to stop this video. Because I got to go to part two. Because this is just too good right here for me to rush this amazing revelation. Glory. Do you see that amazing revelation, church? Do you see the word of God being established before us by the power of the Holy Ghost? We are seeing what John saw. That's what God wants us to see. He wants us to see what John saw. And John saw the end. 
the end of all things. He's seeing the moving of God. He's seeing that the beast did kill and murder and slain the saints, but he also saw the power of God. Woo, glory! He saw God raising the dead. The Spirit of God entered into their bodies. Praise the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Church, go with me to part two. Go with me, church.